Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Hello and welcome to episode 184, Reflections and Observations with me, Amy Rowlandson. This is my 28th Reflections episode and today my main reflection across the last eight months, let alone the last few episodes, has been one of learning and growth. Over the last eight months, I've qualified as a NLP practitioner, a life purpose coach, a journal therapy coach, a master practitioner of hypnosis and timeline therapy. I passed Dr. Linda Shaw's neuroscience professional development program with flying colours, and I've been learning how to create and deliver one-to-many courses with Julie Creffield. I have even been talking funny with Jeremy Nicholas, learning how to add humour to my work. But two weeks ago, I qualified as a master NLP practitioner. And in a couple of weeks, I'm studying for my master coach qualification, which will not only benefit me, but my clients with the ability to bring new language techniques and tools to the life purpose coaching sessions. They'll also feature here in my podcast episodes and in my interviews. Why? Because language is at the heart of your life. You use language as your predominant method of communication, and it's crucial to understanding yourself as an individual and to being understood by others. Language is everywhere. Recognizing its importance in life is clearly what led me to study a degree level of linguistics, the scientific study of language and how it is structured, used and acquired. My curiosity took me on a journey into the why, the what and the how we communicate. It absolutely fascinated me then as an 18 year old student and it continues to do so today as a somewhat more mature student. And back in university, I covered many diverse yet interrelated topics, including English language learning and teaching, sociolinguistics, dialectology, child language acquisition, second language learning, phonetics, morphology, speech therapy, semantics, syntax, phonology and physiology. What I didn't cover all those years ago was neuro-linguistic programming or NLP as it is more often referred to. I'd heard people talk about it. However, I assumed it was something to do with computers or maths. So it never really occurred to me to actually research what it meant. And now, almost three decades later, just qualifying as a master NLP practitioner with the fabulous trainers Jules Montague and Pip Thomas from Edge NLP, alongside Tom White. NLP is a psychological approach which relates thoughts, language and patterns of behaviour learned through experience to specific outcomes, detecting and modifying unconscious biases or limitations of your map of the world. Essentially, NLP is how to use language of the mind to consistently achieve your specific and desired outcomes. By understanding that your way of thinking of the world is just your way of thinking, There is huge scope to change and reframe your language. How you speak, write, listen and read all have a huge impact on not only your daily decisions, but on those all important life decisions. It's time to switch up your language now. Je pense, donc je suis. I think, therefore I am. René Descartes. One particular NLP model I adopted on that master NLP course and have since popped into my coaching toolbox, my essential coaching toolbox to be fair, is the Cartesian coordinates, which are based on a set of mathematical concepts created by French mathematician and philosopher René Descartes. Four questions that work together to help you to get new perspectives and understanding around what inspires or blocks you when making a decision or setting a goal. The questions encourage you to think creatively. They also identify the differing motivations involved moving towards pleasure or moving away from a position of pain. 
I actually used this set of questions last year when trying to understand how I felt around a difficult choice I had to make at the time. It was about my business and about whether to go forward with something else. I didn't realize it was an NLP technique. And before I share this invaluable set of questions with you in the hope that it will help you to find creative solutions and explore all possible options, first, you will need to identify with clarity the decision or goal you want to focus on. Then add the statement you identify to the end of each question to make it personal for you. One, what would happen if you did make this change? Two, What would happen if you didn't make this change? Three, what wouldn't happen if you did make this change? Four, what wouldn't happen if you didn't make this change? So, for example, if you wanted to become a podcaster, the questions would look like these. What would happen if you did become a podcaster? What would happen if you didn't become a podcaster? What wouldn't happen if you did become a podcaster? And what wouldn't happen if you didn't become a podcaster? Question one helps you to visualize your motivation towards fulfilling and achieving your decision or your goal. Question two focuses on staying as you are and any pain points related to your current situation. Question three helps you to understand what you may lose as a result of making a change. The double negative in question four really switches up your thinking and will disrupt your flow and your conscious processing. This is intentional as it reveals any hidden perspectives and helps you to tap into your feelings. So on the surface, they may seem like fairly straightforward questions. However, next time you have a decision to make, try them. See how you get on with them. Whether you're conscious of it or not, your language rules your life. Be more aware of the importance of your language, both internally and externally, how it impacts your life and how it affects your way of thinking, being, doing and having. Identify a presenting problem, a goal, a decision that you're facing in either your personal or your professional life and apply the Cartesian coordinates to them. My new Focus on Why LaunchPod Mastermind started yesterday and it was absolutely fantastic. First session out of eight. I use the Cartesian coordinates in each of the one-to-one onboarding sessions and they brought to light so much more depth as to why each person wanted to become a podcaster. So collectively launching individual podcasts is what this group program is focused on. And just watch this space for incredible podcasts coming soon to ears near you. Okay, let's focus on the reflections and observations. If you're new to focus on why, these episodes are where I pull out a learning, a reflection or an observation and I explore it in more detail. And it gives you the opportunity to see whether you might want to go back and tune into each of these individual episodes. It's kind of like a trailer, but in reverse, because the podcast episodes have already been released. So first up, episode 179, Justice for Children with Lisa Bedlow. Sidelined and highly anxious as a child, Lisa is now on a mission to make it better for children than it was for her. Passionate, heart-driven, Lisa has an inbuilt justice for children. She's an educator where it's not just about the education. She wants to support children emotionally too. And after 30 years inside the education system, Lisa is now making an impact from outside the system. It's about getting there earlier, the prevention over cure approach, that if you apply the money into the right places early enough, It could replace the latter approaches of having to pile money into the back end of the system, into the prison system, for example. Lisa leads from the heart and she is prepared to speak out on behalf of others. And what I want to reflect on from her episode is an exercise that Lisa shared, the Amazing You exercise, where you think of five amazing things about you. This exercise is aimed for children. However, Regardless of age, have a think now of five amazing things about you. Can you think of five or do you need some help? 
Lisa says that some of her older children start to struggle with this as they have started the conditioning of low self-esteem, low self-worth and low self-confidence that all started to surface at a very young age. So Lisa has some further questions that could help you. How would your friends describe you? What would they say? Pause this episode now until you've done it, till you've got those five amazing things about you. Okay, do you have them? No? Okay, pause again and think of a few more until you've got at least five. Do you have them now? Great. Now I want to hear you say them out loud. I want you to hear you shout from the rooftops. In fact, just message them to me. Email me them, whatever, shout them on or share them on a social media post. Why not? You are amazing. Know that. You are unique and incredible and have superpowers. Use them. Use them to make a positive impact. And if you didn't listen to Lisa's episode, go back and tune in. You may be taken back to when you were a child and recognize some of what Lisa shared and understand just why she's seeking justice for children. Next up is 180 Eliminating Stress with Ruth Fogg. There's almost an irony in that the fact that Ruth works on an area that she struggled with at a particular point in her life. Maybe it's not irony. Maybe it was destiny. Many people who have been on Focus on Why have now chosen to work in a role where they can support others with an area that they themselves have struggled with at some point in their life. Ruth experienced stress to a really high degree and she's now equipping others in her supposed retirement. It's taken on a whole new lease of life with a focus to eliminating stress for other people. Her toolbox is full to the brim and she is determined to enable and empower as many people as possible to give them magic in their own fingertips to manage and eliminate their own stress. I asked Ruth a question about whether stress was actually ever good for us. And she said, yes, you stress. I hadn't heard of you stress. You stress is spelt E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. And it means beneficial stress from either a psychological, a physical or a biochemical perspective. The term was coined by endocrinologist Hans Sely, consisting of the Greek prefix EU, meaning good and stress, literally meaning good stress. So if like me, the idea or concept that you stress exists is a new one to you, that stress can actually be beneficial is is strange. You, well, you're in fellow company with me because I had no idea that you stress was out there. But I guess I did because I've been applying it. So let's find out some more about you stress. According to clinical psychologist Dr. Michael Genovese, exciting or stressful events cause a chemical response in the body. You stress helps us to stay motivated, work towards goals, and feel good about life. So, yes. You did know about eustress, as I did too. We've been doing it. We've been experiencing it. We just didn't know that that's what it was called. So when pushing yourself out of your comfort zone into that state of eustress, it produces positive feelings of excitement, fulfillment, meaning, satisfaction, well-being. When you focus on why, eustress is at the opposite end of the spectrum to distress. And it makes perfect sense. So you stress enables you to emotionally have positive feelings of contentment, of motivation, of inspiration. And it's when you've been in that state of flow. Psychologically, you stress helps you to build on your resilience, on autonomy, on your self-efficacy. And physically, it helps you to push your body to complete challenging exercises. So next time when you're feeling stressed, think Is this positive, you stress, or negative stress that you're experiencing? If you're learning, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, taking on board a new skill, exercising the body, or working towards achieving a goal you've set, it's likely to be you stress that you're in, not distress. 
And one other reflection from Ruth's episode is that when she said, what the mind suppresses, the body expresses, it got me thinking. What a great line. What does it say to you? How does it impact your life? What the mind suppresses, your body expresses. What is it your body may be telling you right now? Don't ignore these signs. Face up to the messages and take care of you today. I've said it before and I'll say it again in case you didn't hear me the first time. Where will you live tomorrow if you don't take care of your body today? It's a sobering thought. Are you taking your health for granted? You have only one body, so take care of it. Next up, episode 181, Heart-Shaped Decisions with Graham Frost. Graham is the only professional speaker who escaped from a cult, went to prison and recovered from testicular cancer all before he was 25 years old. He left home at the age of 17 without a plan, without a purpose. Feeling before thinking was a decision-making process that he lived by. Cutting himself off completely from his strict church-focused family, Graham left his family home and didn't return for 27 years. He wanted to be challenged. He wanted to learn new things and he wanted to make his own choices in life. So following a series of heart-shaped decisions, he led himself down several very different paths until finally finding his purpose and his voice to help young people stand up for themselves. He said it's about helping young people in particular to understand that the choices that they make now are going to define their lives. So let's look at this feeling before thinking decision-making theory that Graham has adopted. Is it possible to have feeling before thought and then take action? Having just worked with Dr. Linda Shaw on her neuroscience professional development course, what I took away from the learnings was that decisions can be manipulated by emotion before your conscious awareness, that emotion strongly influences communication and behavior. Emotion influences cognition and decision making. Emotions and feelings are different. Emotion is the response chemically and neurologically produced by the brain when presented by an appropriate stimulus. Feelings are private and mental portraits, composite perceptions of the physiological reactions to emotions. And Portuguese-American psychologist Antonio Damasio says that emotion is an essential element of rational thought, that rationality requires feeling, and feeling requires rationality. One of the most important learnings to take away and apply is that how you make people feel is paramount to your success in business and in life. Be aware that it's impossible for you to know how someone else feels. It's just absolutely impossible to know exactly how they feel. So what can you do? Listen to what words people use and parrot their exact words and their expressions. That way you can show compassion. And Dr. Linda Shaw said that the best thing you can do or the best you can do is to feel compassion and empathy. So catch yourself if you ever start to say, I know exactly how you feel. You don't. No one can. It's just not possible. Next up is episode 182, Understand Your Truth with Jilly Barlow. Jilly spoke about how seeds get sown in us. Ruth Fogg had also spoken about this. She mentioned in her episode how the seed of being deaf and daft had got sown very early on in her life, aged around 11. So what was Jilly's seed? Well, like Ruth, it was about not achieving at school and being considered daft. It was about Jilly breaking that cycle of what people expected her to be able to do or more to the point, not be able to do. It was about Jilly pushing out of her comfort zone and proving to herself first that she was able to do what she wanted to do. It was about understanding how she could share her love. And Jilly and I spoke of love languages and of the importance of understanding how different the languages of love can be. According to Gary Chapman in his book, The Five Love Languages, there are five words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch. Sophocles said, one word frees us all of the weight and pain of life. That word is love. 
Focus on love. Wouldn't it be great if we could all just spread a little love around? It reminds me of one of the wonderful podcast conversations I recorded last December, episode 129 with diversity and inclusion expert Jackie Handy. Speaking of the importance and impact of love and belonging in the world. We look for connection, seeking a sense of belonging and that feeling that we are loved. So what does love mean to you? The Greeks used four different words to describe love. Eros, described an erotic, passionate love. Philia, describe the type of love you have for friends and equals. Storge, describe the love parents have for their children. And agape is a love of mankind. Love is different for all of us. You have an abundance of love within you, ready to share freely with others. Who would benefit from your love? You express and receive love differently to others. And you will tend to fall into one of these five universal categories that Gary Chapman has identified. Could it be words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time or physical touch that you prefer above the others? And hearing these five different love languages, it struck me that I didn't know what my children's love languages were, what my husband's love languages were. And so I asked them to take the quiz and I've put the quiz in the show notes if you'd like to try it too. And my daughter's primary love language is quality time with words of affirmation as her next priority. My son also favours quality time with acts of service and words of affirmation joint second for him. And my husband? Well, no surprise to me, his primary love language is also quality time with physical touch and words of affirmation squally hiding too. And for me, I prioritise acts of service and words of affirmation, which is why I respond so well and so fondly to written Apple podcast reviews and LinkedIn testimonials. So can you see how much each of us have different ways of expressing and receiving love just in my family alone? And knowing that changes how we all communicate our love to one another to ensure that it's received in accordance with our preferences My husband's turning 50 next month and understanding his love language, I decided to give him 50 days of birthday to feed his love of quality time. So whilst receiving gifts scored low for him, the time that we're spending with one another each day of those 50 days is topping him up with love and he's loving all the attention he's getting. And as Reese Witherspoon said, you always gain by giving love. So take an opportunity to spread your love today, just as Jilly is spreading her love with others. Love and be loved. Work out what your primary love language is, what others are, and whatever you do, do it with love. My final reflection today goes to episode 183, Realising Potential with Alex Williams. With over 16 years of clinical experience assessing and treating mental illness within the NHS, as well as taking the journey to overcome his own personal trauma, Alex is on a mission to improve the mental health of young adults and teenagers, helping them to rediscover their power, to recognise their potential, and regardless of what happens to them, to recognise that their dreams are still possible. I almost called this episode Responsibility. However, like Alex said, no one really embraces the word as much as it deserves. Responsibility requires effort. It's not exciting, except it is. It really can be. Responsibility can be whatever you want it to be. It's truly awesome. As Alex says, do you treat responsibility as though it's something you don't want it to be? Something you believe you have to do or need to do? However, what if you choose responsibility? What does it give you then? What if you reframe responsibility as though it is your superpower? What then? Inspired, saved and now guided by the words written in Viktor E. Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. Alex says that you have been gifted your own superpower, responsibility. When you take responsibility, you choose the direction you take. You choose the path you want to take. Flip it around and turn responsibility around to be your ability to respond. What then? You have choice. You choose to live life on your terms. 
Victory Frankel has featured in so many of, of Focus on Why episodes. And it makes sense because his book, Man's Search for Meaning and Focus on Why, are essentially speaking the same essence. You're looking for meaning in your life. And to do that, you focus on why. Why do you do what you do in whatever context you choose that to be the case? What if we got there earlier? What if there was prevention over cure? The two questions that Alex asked, the same two questions and the approach that I started with today with Lisa Bedlow's Justice with Children. These are the two questions that Alex Williams asks as he focuses on bulletproofing mental health for those teenagers and those young adults. There are so many people out there with aligned thoughts. What if they could come together and combine their efforts? What if the Lisa's and Alex's of this world all came together? What then? As Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. For those who choose curiosity and seek purpose and meaning in life, Alex uses his three R's to realizing potential model to show them the steps to take to go on a journey of a thousand miles, inspired by the words of Lao Tzu, who said a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. What step will you take right now? Remember, as Alex said, what happens to you does not determine what can happen for you. You may experience bad times, they may create obstacles, but it doesn't mean you cannot reach the finish line. What you choose to do is as a result of what you say to yourself. What is your inner language saying right now? What would happen if you did choose to take responsibility? What would happen if you didn't choose to take responsibility? What wouldn't happen if you did choose to take responsibility? And what wouldn't happen if you didn't choose to take responsibility? Thank you for listening to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson, and if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave me a five-star Apple podcast review. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, and become a member of my inspiring, uplifting, and positive Focus on Why Facebook group. I help people to focus on their why with clarity, uniting their passion with their purpose with a plan to create the life they truly desire. If you would like me to help you focus on your why, then please book a free 20-minute coaching call via calendly.com forward slash Amy Rowlandson. And if you haven't already, please sign up for the Friday Focus weekly newsletter via my website, amyrowlandson.com. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Why?